Hi everybody. Um, very sorry about this. We had some technical difficulties, um, as often happens. Uh, so I think we're okay now. So hello everybody. Uh, my name is Owen Ryan. I'm an MHPSS technical advisor working with International Medical Corps, and I'm currently primarily supporting our uh, MHPSS programs in the Middle East. So I'll be taking you through this uh, breakout session. Uh, we have a shorter time than we had planned. Uh, the initial part of the launch went on for a little bit longer, so we might need to go through this a little bit quickly. Um, but I'll try to leave a little bit of time at the end for questions and answers if possible as well. Um, what we're going to do is um, have a brief overview um, of this session. Uh, we will I'll I will have an overview of a case study um, of International Medical Corps project in Lebanon. And also apologies for any of you who have a lot of experience in ME or are specialists or experts yourselves. Um, but we're trying to make this as easy like, and as accessible as possible, um, especially as there's people, uh, a lot of different people in this breakout session with uh, a lot of different, a range of different experiences um, as well. So we're going to keep it quite simple. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll get to as many questions as possible uh, towards the end before we come back to the main session. So without further ado, I shall share my screen and we'll start the presentation. Okay. And just to be sure, can you see the presentation? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So thanks everybody for joining. Um, we'll quickly go through some terminology just for, as some people may not be very aware of, all of the term the common uh, terminology that's being used and um, that's included in the framework and specifically the terminology that we'll use for this case study presentation. So monitoring is the systematic gathering of information that assesses quality and progress over time uh, for services, um, interventions and for projects. Evaluation is this, uh, assesses this specific information at specific time points to determine if actions taken have achieved the intended results with a look towards uh, if we have achieved what we want to achieve, if we're on track to achieve it, and also if we need to make changes to what we're doing to help us to better achieve the, our intended goals. Monitoring and evaluation is interlinking these two separate practices. I mean, is very important also for accountability within our sector and in, in all sectors, for sure. Um, it, monitoring and evaluation helps us to be accountable to all the stakeholders involved, um, in MHPSS programming, not just um, direct beneficiaries, but also staff and volunteers, management, the donors who provide the funding for these projects, uh, community members at large, and as well at the higher level with governments, ministries, um, and other national agencies. Uh, this terminology is aligned with what is used in the common framework. Um, we will use some, but not all today, so I won't go through all the terminology just uh, what's, what will be used for this case study. So we will look at goal impact indicators. These are normally aligned with a goal a statement um, and aim to reflect the, the result or impact of actions on a broader scale, institution or institutional scale. The outcome indicator is aligned with outcome statements and aim to reflect changes for individuals or groups of people that have occurred as a consequence of the particular MHPSS program or intervention. Output indicators are aligned with the activity and aim to reflect whether the planned activity was carried out as intended. And means of verification are the tools we use to measure indicators. Um, they may also be called measurements, assessments, or data collection tools. When choosing and using means of verification, um, this can be done either quantitatively or, quant or qualitatively. And we look through these six um, topics to ensure that the means of verification um, are the right fit for the services in the program that we are uh, employing and for measuring um, the impact and the success um, of those interventions. We look at relevance, accessibility, feasibility, acceptability, reliability, and validity uh, of these tools. A log frame or a logical framework is a document that gives an overview of objectives, activities, resources of a project. It also provides information about external elements that may influence the project called assumptions. Normally we will include um, the, the goals, 
the outcomes, the outputs, the related indicators, the targets, means of verification in this document. It's a map that helps us to visualize um, the monitoring and evaluation framework for a specific project. And now to the case study. So for the case study that we present today, we've chosen uh, the context is Lebanon and the project is integrating MHPS services into a primary healthcare facility in Lebanon. Uh, this, what we'll provide today is not the full example of the project that we have in Lebanon at the moment. Um, we have summarized it to a certain extent, just due to the time constraint that we have for this presentation today. Okay, so the context in Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon, as many of you may know, has been going through and experiencing quite a lot of adversity and difficulties over previous years. And there has been quite uh, a large uh, humanitarian response within the country as well. Um, the issues are multifaceted, um, affecting both uh, Lebanese communities internally and also the large refugee population that lives in Lebanon, uh, primarily due to the conflict in Syria, but also um, the conflict in other um, countries within the Middle East region also. In addition to this, in more recent years, um, as you may know, there are other <sighs> forms of adversity have come up in terms of social and political unrest. A lot of this to do with the political and economic situation in Lebanon, which has been deteriorating and continues to deteriorate to this day, unfortunately. Um, very large refugee population um, being supported by the Lebanese country, by the Lebanese government, um, and all international and local organizations who are also trying to support there as well, um, specifically related to the population as well. And the refugee population is estimated uh, for, um, officially and unofficially to be about a quarter of the population of the entire country. Um, there is a lot of information and data available um, within Lebanon regarding the, the MHPSS needs within country. Um, numerous assessments have been carried out by international and local agencies, as well as the Ministry of Public Health and the National Mental Health Program. Um, the needs vary from people in need of more specialized services, um, community, level in, uh, community level projects, um, integration of MHPSS into healthcare, primary healthcare, um, community centers, uh, different types of community settings, as well as additional emergency response measures. And for example, the Beirut port blast, um, which occurred two years ago, which um, also required a separate MHPSS intervention there as well, due to the numbers of people who were affected by it and needed uh, support and care in the aftermath also. In addition to this in Lebanon, um, there is and has been uh, a lot of limitations in terms of the availability and also the access to MHPSS services within country over the years. There have been uh, numerous efforts um, by the government through the Ministry of Public Health and the National Mental Health Programme, local and international organisations to try to address these gaps um, and the needs of the population residing in Lebanon. However, there is, uh, there is a lot more work to be done to ensure that MHPSS services are available and accessible for the entire population. Um, in general, MHPSS services are sometimes targeted at the refugee population or the local population, but more often than not, they are available for both, um, where they are, when, when they are provided and where they are provided. Um, the difficulties in access to MHPSS services in Lebanon, multifaceted, they include um, lack of availability in certain areas, especially in rural areas of the country, um, issues with transportation, issues with cost of transportation, especially now as fuel prices have um, been rising and rising over the past year, um, making it more difficult for people to travel. The security context um, makes it difficult for people also sometimes. Um, in addition to this, although there are quite a number of mental health practitioners and specialists within the country operating, there still are not enough. Um, and this is being addressed through a task shifting approach within country as well, in terms of providing capacity building 
and supporting the system strengthening to provide services, additional MHPSS services within multiple locations in the country by non-MHPSS specialists and people who were not MHPSS practitioners uh, prior um, to these projects that are being implemented at the moment. The plan of int uh, intervention that we have within Lebanon is coordinating with all actors and more specifically the coordination mechanisms such as the Mental Health Task Force uh, and the Ministry of Public Health through the National Mental Health Programme. Um, obviously this coordination is extremely important to try and address um, and fill the gaps in MHPSS service provision throughout the country where they are most needed and where they are not being provided. Um, International Medical Corps uh, plan of intervention here in terms of how we will support um, the increasing availability and access of MHPSS services in Lebanon is supporting at the primary healthcare level, where we try to do system strengthening and capacity building at primary healthcare facilities um, to provide capacity building for staff to identify and make referrals for people who may be in need of MHPSS services, in addition to um, capacity building on provision of uh, services that address MHPSS needs and provide supports and care for people at multiple levels. We believe the integration is very important and primary health care facilities are a fantastic entry point to MHPSS services for people who may know that they need MHPSS services. They know they can, they can access those services confidentially within primary health care facilities, but also for people who may not be aware that they have mental health needs, for example, which does happen sometimes, that they can be, identi be identified by healthcare facility staff and appropriate referrals made. We provide, we try to provide as holistic a model um, of MHPSS services as possible, including psychiatry, psychotherapy, mental health case management, brief psychological interventions, counseling, as well as um, community outreach and awareness raising activities, sorry which aim to increase awareness of MHPSS services, MHPSS needs within the community, so that people know um, if and when they or somebody that they know may need MHPSS services and they know how to access these services. So now we will go through an example, uh, a sample of the project log frame uh, that we have used for our M MHPSS intervention in Lebanon and how this has been based on um, the guidance provided by the ISC MNE MHPSS framework and the additional means of verification guidance also. So we've taken um, as our overall goal, the goal provided by uh, within the framework um, for, for MHPSS services at the primary healthcare level, which is reduced suffering and improved mental health and psychosocial wellbeing. This applies to the community at large, but more specifically those who are accessing MHPSS services. In terms of measuring the impact, which is the next section, uh, of our services, there, as you'll see from the ME framework, there are many ways to measure impact. There are many different methods and tools that can be used. Some of them relate to more specific uh, types of services or activities that are being provided. In this case, we've we have chosen to go with um, measuring our function levels for people who are accessing MHPSS services. This is due to the holistic nature of the service provision model that is provided, um, where ideally um, a person who is in need of MHPSS services can access a range of services uh, to best meet their needs. Um, as outlined in the care plan that is um, developed by them and by their case manager. Uh, improved functioning can be due to a number of different supports. Um, so for example, one beneficiary with a mental health need may come to uh, a primary healthcare facility, receive a referral to MHPSS services, meet a, a mental health case manager, um, conduct a biopsychosocial assessment and uh, develop a care plan and then receive multiple services from different providers. For example, from the mental health case manager, they may receive some counseling, they may receive uh, brief psychological interventions, they may also receive services from a psychiatrist, a psychotherapist, or a healthcare staff who's trained on um, MHGAP um, intervention guide, for example, as well. 
and this is so improved functioning this is used uh, as it is a measurement um, that can include um, how do you say it? benefits from multiple different services and isn't directly related to one specific service uh, the outcome measurement or outcome that has been chosen is community members have access to and awareness of MHPS services. Again, this is adapted from the ME framework. Um, this is very important as part of the integration model. Um, the, the whole goal of integration really is that people have access to and awareness of MHPS services for when they need them. Um, within the community that people know about those services, they know how to access those services and that they would feel comfortable with accessing the services and that services are acceptable for them as well, including um, means of cultural um, acceptability also too. To achieve this the goal, the impact and the outcome, um, the outputs um, specifically related to the activities of the intervention um, are three. The provision of holistic integrated individual MHPS services, community members provided with awareness on MHPSS topics, and to support this capacity building, MHPSS training, and very importantly, also supervision is provided for MHPSS service providers and healthcare staff. Here, we have the activities related to the impact, outcome, and outputs um, for this intervention. As you'll see here, they're very closely related to them. Um, each outcome, or output in the logical framework does not need to have one corresponding activity, but can help multiple, as you will see here. Um, just to save on time, I won't go through each of these. I think they're very self-explanatory, but if you have any more questions, um, we can answer them at the end of the session. And here for the most important part of this case study, um, is this section of the logical framework where we will go through the indicators related to the, the goal, the outcomes and the outputs, measuring targets and the means of verifications that have been, uh, that have been decided upon and used. So the overall goal impact indicator, which was related to uh, the functioning levels of beneficiaries, uh, the indicator chosen here, um, adapted from the framework is the percentage of beneficiaries receiving MHPSS services that report improved daily functioning. Now, what we use in Lebanon is an adapted version of the HUDAS 2.0, which we call the client functioning scale, which um, has been adapted culturally and in terms of language for use within Lebanon and the Middle East, um, and has gone through the review and adaptation process for adapting means of verification, which you can uh, read more about within the, uh, the, the common m &E framework as well. Um, and there's guidance uh, for making these adaptations there. Outcome indicator one um, is quantitative, number of beneficiaries who receive clinical management of MNS disorders through medical services. The target set here is just based on the um, a number or sorry, it's based on a number of factors, um, including the capacity of staff, the resources that we have available, the estimated level of need within the community, as well as the population of the community that is being um, supported and serviced by this primary healthcare facility and these MHPS service providers. The means of verification. Here is a beneficiary register, which is extremely important to have in MH, any MHPSS program, where we can log details um, of beneficiaries. Um, this can be adapted in many ways, depending on the needs of the individual MHPSS program and the services that you are providing. Outcome indicator two, number of beneficiaries who receive focused psychosocial and psychological care. This would normally, um, have a target higher than those receiving clinical management for MNS disorders. Um, as what we would see normally in our, in our uh, program in Lebanon is that more people um, want to access and need to receive psychosocial support as opposed to more kind of clinical care. Um, often some people, uh, many people will access both um, levels of care also as well. The means of verification here is the same, the beneficiary register. This is due to the fact that beneficiaries will often, um, if not nearly always, um, 
uh, receive uh, different types of services. Um, we don't use different registers or different means of verification for these two indicators due to this fact. Um, the one database will give us the information um, that we need um, for verification on the number of beneficiaries, as well as any additional information that is required also. Outcome indicator three, level of satisfaction of people with mental health and psychosocial problems and or their families regarding the care that they received. This is the qualitative indicator that is used here for this outcome. And we measure this through beneficiary satisfaction surveys. Again, you can find um, examples that can be adapted within the ME framework. Um, the, 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 we use a surveying with beneficiaries. We, we take a sample, let's say on a quarterly basis. Um, and we use the results of this sample of people who have completed the satisfaction survey um, to generate the results. Um, the target here is set at 80%. The reason why this target has been chosen is based on uh, our prior experience of programming, um, looking at the satisfaction or levels of satisfaction that we have noted in other, in other similar projects and interventions within the context. And with, with the addition of setting the bar a little bit higher, as we're also always trying to um, improve the level of services and the quality of services that we're providing um, and the satisfaction that our beneficiaries have with our services also. Next, moving to the outputs. Output indicator one is a quantitative number of health facility staff trained and MHPSS referral procedures. Um, again, taken from the common ME framework. This is extremely important in the integration model as um, not all staff working within a healthcare facility will be able to provide MHPSS services, but all of them will have interaction with um, patients and people who come for a range of different reasons, obviously normally for, um, for primary healthcare services. And it's extremely important within this model and in terms of system strengthening um, and in terms of uh, establishing and improving referral pathways and ensuring that they are maintained that staff um, who don't provide MHPAS services do receive the training and do know how to identify if somebody may be in need of MHPAS services uh, and knows how to make appropriate referrals to the correct referral point. Means of verification here uh, for capacity building and for training would be the project training records. This can include um, attendance lists for the training um, as well as training reports. Um, and also feedback forms uh, from training participants. Output indicator two no, is number of, of health facility staff who are trained in the provision of MHPSS services. Um, this, uh, this indicator is directly related, obviously, to the, the capacity building of healthcare and MHPSS service providers within the healthcare facility who will be providing direct MHPSS services. Um, in each facility um, that we work in, a general rule of thumb that we have from previous experience is maybe a quarter or 20% of the staff working in the facility may, will be able to provide MHPSS services. We will normally target that many and possibly a few extra if possible with training. Again, the means of verification here for this indicator is the same as the previous one, as it's also capacity building. Um, using project training records, um, attendance lists, training reports, and feedback forms. Um, in addition, you may want to use um, some qualitative means also uh, for looking at the, um, the, the quality of the training, for example, in terms of feedback forms, or also post-training evaluations or pre and post tests for the training. Indicator number three is community members provided with awareness on MHPSS topics. Uh, this is essential for improving accessibility to MHPSS services. If people don't know about them, they don't know how to access them or that they can access them. So in most communities where we um, try to, where we aim to integrate MHPSS services into a primary healthcare facility, we will also conduct um, outreach services, awareness raising activities and campaigns, either in person or through other means such as social media. Uh, within the community to try to 
bring the message of those MHPSS services and how to access them and why somebody might want to access them to as many community members as possible. Uh, the target is based on uh, a sample of the community that we want to uh, target, as well as internal resources and human, human resources specifically, um, as well as the timing of the project as well, um, in terms of how many sessions um, and how many outreach visits we think we can conduct within that time period with the staff that we have. The means of verification chosen here are activity attendance records. Um, these can normally take the form of attendance lists um, for group activities um, or individual forms that are signed by people who receive um, outreach services, for example. And that is it. Um, that's the end of the case study. So I think now we may have a little bit of time for questions and answers, I hope, um, before we go back to the main group. So I'll check on the chat. Um, so yeah, I don't see that there were any questions put into the chat from what I can see. Um, so I'll just give a few minutes now for anybody who would like to bring something up if they have a specific question about this case study. Um, I would say maybe just unmute yourself and go. Um, there's too many people here for me to see if there's uh, uh, people raising their hands. So there is one hand raised for Robert. Ah, yes. yes. Hello. Hi, Robert. Yes. Can you... OK, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And I think this tool is actually going to go a long way to help us. I'm Robert from um, IUM, Ghana. I would like to find out, in terms of, um, for example, other community activities like um, group sessions that we have, for example, we, we work with return migrants in the communities. Um, how do we measure some of this, uh, the impact of some of these activities using this new uh, toolkit? Thank you. Hi, Robert, thanks for the question. Um, and it's a good question as well. Um, so yeah, we didn't cover that specifically in this case study, but it is an activity that we conduct ourselves quite often as well within these Excuse me, sorry, I have a, a little bit of a cold um, at the moment. So it very much depends on the project, um, what the goal of the group activities within the community are as well. Um, like one, obviously the, the first answer to this question would be to go through that section within the m &E framework as well, where there are quite a few um, examples of how this can be done. I would say from my experience, I mean, in terms of quantitative, um, you're looking at the number of participants that are taking part and using means of verification normally would be something very simple like an attendance sheet. Um, if you want to know how useful um, the, the group activity was, let's say, um, did it meet the needs of those people who were taking part in those activities, you can use, um, I would say, adapted feedback forms as well. Again, there's examples within the, the m and &E framework for this. Um, but these, I would say normally what we do, um, and you're probably looking to do this yourself as well, is adapting it to the specific goal and objectives and the needs of the group that you are having this um, activity with also as well. Um, I would say also, um, if it's an ongoing activity um, over a number of sessions, with more focused goals and objectives. I would also recommend using um, satisfaction forms as well, where you can get um, feedback, not only on the quality of the service itself or the activity, but also uh, feedback on the setting, on the, um, the, the quality of facilitation of the sessions, um, logistical issues, were there too many people, were people, um, participants allowed to freely and openly say things that they wanted to say, was it easily accessible, um, is it easy for people to, to get to the groups, um, and if they have other feedback in terms of how the group could be, or the group activity could be improved in the future also. 
Um, so they will be my initial thoughts on that question, Robert. Um, I hope that answers your question and let me know if you have anything else that needs to be clarified. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, just let everybody know we had a message from Ananda. We have very little time. So if anybody has any more questions, um, please go ahead now before um, we get cut off and brought back to the main session. Oh, and there are a couple of questions in the chat. I'm just reading that now. Um, so from Sophie is the first one I see here. Um, how biases are mitigated and what type of tools means of verification are used. So thanks for the thanks for that question, Sophie. It is a little bit difficult. I will say this uh, from my own experience. Um, there can be biases in terms of how tools are developed. Um, we may develop tools ourselves in terms of looking for specific information and receiving information in more in specific ways, maybe as well. However, we need to be open to, especially with client satisfaction tools or beneficiary satisfaction tools, to be more open to um, forms of information that we may not even be thinking of as well, that may not be covered. Um, number one, I'd say when, when developing the tool, definitely go through the steps outlined within the m &E framework. Um, sorry, we have one minute, so I'll quickly try to answer this question. Um, which outline how to do this as well, um, doing a desk review, getting as much information as possible about what is appropriate, what is acceptable within the culture, um, looking at previous experiences that you and other actors have in terms of getting feedback um, from your beneficiaries, as well as pilot piloting the tool itself, I think is really important. So if you design a tool, you go through the process, um, your translations, uh, you have some of your staff or technical advisors might uh, review the tool. Ensure that you pilot this and possibly use it with maybe one group of people, for example, in one session, but ask them also for feedback on the tool that was used as well to see how appropriate it was for them to use um, and what they think could be better in the future as well. If there was, for example, things they wanted to say or feedback that they wanted to give, that there was no space for within the tool. Um, secondly, I would recommend a 